back everyone to the afternoon session of Veritas Lecture Series 14, Mind the Gap. I'm one of your hosts for the day, Bianca. You're currently viewing in stream two and we have four speakers lined up for you all. Should you wish to change to stream one and find yourself dropped from the talk, please head back to the main page and re-enter via agenda. Don't worry if you would like to attend both. The entire activities of the event are recorded and will be uploaded for viewing and publication in the next coming weeks. Towards the end of the session, we will have everyone in stream one and two back on screen together in the second panel Q&A session at 4.30. Now let's jump into our next talk. Mass mobility. How do we move people around and connect them within the current system? This is a topic best suited for our next speaker. The Group Executive Director of Eureka Corporation Bahad and CEO of Mobilist and Diren Bahad, Mr. Chan Chi Kian. With conversations on climate change at the forefront today, it is befitting that we are able to discuss new green technology with an expert in this field. Mobilist strives to provide efficient urban transportation solutions to cities and municipalities through the deployment of innovative new energy vehicles and technology, including electric and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Congratulations, Mr. Chan, on the launch of the Automated Rapid Transit Art Systems earlier this year. The floor is now yours. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's an honor to be uh, part of this uh, latest lecture series 14. Um, Mobilis, as, uh, as introduced by Bianca earlier, uh, we actually established in 2019 as a joint venture between uh, CRRC Urban Traffic, uh, which is a uh, Shanghai-based uh, global provider of urban transit solutions and a Malaysian company. Uh, and uh, we, we actually have our backgrounds in uh, property development uh, and construction, uh, and we have previously actually worked with Veritas and actually various uh, uh, projects uh, here in Malaysia. Uh, a bit more about CRRC, our technology partner as well as our shareholder. Uh, CRRC Urban Traffic is actually uh, part of the CRRC Group. Uh, our CRRC Group is actually the world's largest uh, transit and rail equipment manufacturer, uh, and uh, so they produce uh, anything from your high-speed rails that you see in China, to locomotive, uh, to your uh, MRT and LRT trains, uh, and all the way down to a uh, smaller form of uh, transportation uh, uh, that you tend to see um, uh, more commonly on the, on the street, like uh, buses, uh, well, in this case, electric buses, uh, tram systems, uh, and your even your smaller monorail uh, type systems. Um, so um, CRC Urban Traffic is a particular, uh, is, a, is a unit uh, within the CRC group uh, that looks at solving uh, urban transit issues, or urban traffic uh, issues uh, in cities uh, and uh, providing them with uh, green uh, and new energy solutions. Um, so Mobilis uh, strives to provide uh, these uh, solutions uh, to cities uh, 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 starting off in Malaysia and hopefully uh, regionally in years to come. Um, so our ethos is actually really uh, built upon the aspiration that urban mobility uh, ought to be decentralized and de democratized. Uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, you know, a lot of us uh, in, in this digital age, uh, we have uh, choices and decisions all at our fingertips uh, on our mobile phones, uh, you know, right in front of a computer. Um, so, um, you know, and I'm sure everyone will be quite familiar with the term of mobility as a service. Um, you know, it is a trend uh, that has emerged over the last few years. Uh, and I think, um, you know, this um, pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, you know, has really brought to the forefront uh, uh, the focus of actually uh, issues that we're facing in mobility. Uh, so, you know, Mobilis uh, stands for mobility uh, plus us, uh, you know, where uh, choices and decisions, uh, just like any other services that you now have, uh, ought to be really at your fingertip, or in this case, at your doorstep. Um, since uh, 2019, uh, and uh, even slightly before that, uh, we've been working with CRC Urban Traffic uh, to actually um, um, to actually look at landscape of uh, urban uh, traffic in Malaysia, uh, and one of the technology that we have been actually uh, uh, that we have actually introduced uh, uh, to Malaysia, uh, and we've been very very excited about it uh, over the last few years, uh, is actually called the automated rapid uh, transit system. Uh, I'm going to share a video uh, in my next uh, slide, and uh, I'm going to talk through some of the features of the ART. So here you see the evolution of uh, locomotives to uh, you know your high-speed rails to your regular MRTs and light uh, LRT system that we're all quite familiar. This is a traditional tram system, uh, and if you remove the steel rails 
uh, as well as the steel wheels and the cantonary above, uh, put on a virtual track uh, and a tram-like system uh, is what we call the automated rapid transit system. So the look and feel of it is actually very much like a regular tram system. Now the footages that you actually see in this video is actually taken uh, out of a city in China uh, called Zhuzhou in the Hunan province, uh, near the city of Changsha. Uh, it's actually fully uh, electric uh, battery powered or hydrogen fuel cell power. In this case, electric drive uh, produces a, a 25 kilometer driving distance and for a 10 minute charge. It's got multi-axle steering system uh, that ensures uh, agility around uh, corners. Uh, it's got a better turning radius than a conventional uh, tram, and even better than a traditional uh, 12 meter buses. So you see the ART, uh, this is an overhead view of the ART with, with its virtual tracks uh, painted. Again, a footage in the Chuchou city in Hunan province. In terms of height, it's 3.4 meters, 2.65 meters width. Uh, it works on an optical sensor that detects uh, the virtual tracks on the road and is packed with uh, technology around it, anti-collision system, cameras. It's low floor system that is a uh, wheelchair friendly and internally it actually looks like um, any of the LRT uh, uh, LRT or, or you know light rail system or tram system that you see that you're probably quite familiar with So in, in, in this, you will see that the station is actually um, equipped with uh, auto, automated platform gates as well. This is a picture of the driving cab. Now the system, when it's actually paired with trackside equipment, uh, it's actually capable of, of uh, integrating the smart signaling system uh, for traffic lights for a city. It's very flexible and scalable. a peak of the rubber tires at the bottom. Now in larger cities, uh, it can act as a supplementary uh, lines for large cities or in smaller cities, it can actually become the back wheel urban transit system. It's a rooftop view where you can see the battery packs as well as the uh, ventilation uh, system. That's a video of the ART, and I'm going to go into a bit more detail. So we are proud to actually uh, be able to bring the ART to life here in Malaysia for the very first time outside of uh, China, uh, the very first in Southeast Asia, uh, as part of the uh, Iskandar Malaysia uh, BRT uh, bus pilot testing program. Uh, which, is, which was launched on the 8th of April, uh, and uh, we launched it uh, um, yeah, in, in Iskandar Putri, uh, and, uh, and we ran the pilot along the Lubaraya Sultan Iskandar uh, until the end of August. Um, so for the very first time, uh, you, you get to see uh, the ART on the streets of Malaysia, and uh, we have Erda to thank uh, you know, for actually giving us a platform that actually showcases this technology. Uh, so alongside uh, the uh, uh, ART, uh, the conventional electric buses uh, ranging from uh, 8 meters to 12 meters were also piloted as part of the RMBRT uh, bus pilot testing program. And I'm sure actually you, have, you would have heard from uh, uh, Inche Rudy Rudianto, the director of RMBRT, in the earlier morning session. So um, what is the ART? And, I, and I'll talk a bit more about it in, uh, um, by comparing it to a, to a traditional rail system. Now, ART actually is a medium capacity transit system. Uh, at the top of this uh, slide, you will see a traditional composition of a, a rail system uh, from the power supply to the station to the vehicle 
uh, to the rail system, uh, the OCC, uh, as well as the maintenance center. Now, the the um, um, boxes at the bottom uh, basically uh, show, shows the composition of the ART system, uh, and those in blue are basically the uh, special features of the ART. Uh, now, the on onboard power supply is being replaced uh, by, uh, sorry, the overhead or external power supply, uh, in the sense uh, for traditional rails, is uh, usually either cantonary wires on top, or you've got electrified rails. Uh, is being replaced by onboard power supply uh, that could be uh, batteries, uh, lithium-ion batteries, uh, or hydrogen fuel cells. Um, the station is uh, similar, and in the case that you've, you've seen earlier in the video, you've seen earlier, uh, the station is actually fairly uh, complete. Uh, it's got automated passenger gates and all, uh, but it could also work like uh, any hail and stop uh, type uh, stations, uh, tram stations uh, that you commonly see, let's say in Australia and Europe. Um, the tram itself is uh, engineered from ground up uh, from a rail base uh, chassis. Uh, it's a special uh, ART tram, uh, which is actually equipped with uh, uh, optical sensors uh, uh, as well as uh, various uh, uh, systems. Um, now, the main feature around it is actually uh, the virtual track. Uh, I'll talk more about it later. Um, the OCC is uh, similar to traditional rail, uh, and but because of um, uh, the ART running on rubber tires, uh, instead of steel rails, it's got a smaller, uh, it requires a smaller maintenance center uh, and, uh, and owing to the to the smaller turning radius as well. Now, putting it against the um, typical um, systems uh, that you will actually commonly see. Uh, so on the uh, x-axis, uh, you have got um, ideal or system capacity. PPHPD stands for uh, passenger per hour per direction. Uh, and the uh, on the y-axis, you have got the various other modes. Uh, now, I think as, as you all know, the uh, capacity of a urban transit system uh, really, really depends on the peak demand, right? Uh, the higher the peak demand, uh, the larger the uh, system uh, that, uh, that is actually required, um, uh, which is measured in PPHPD, the amount of passenger that you actually can carry uh, on an hour, in an hour. Um, so at the very bottom, you've got your conventional buses, uh, in, in this case, uh, built into a BRT system. Uh, you're able to actually carry uh, uh, quite efficiently up to slightly probably a sub 5,000 PPHPD. Um, then you've got modern trams. Uh, trams are conventionally uh, um, what you what you see running on the on the street, right? Uh, but trams has got its limitation uh, because it runs on the streets um, and it, it operates on steel wheels. Uh, it, it has got limitation in terms of gradability, uh, which means that if you require to actually bring more people uh, uh, in in a particular route. Right uh, and and um, you know because you are actually um, limited by the uh, space that you have on the road, right? You will actually have to elevate the system. So when you do that, uh, traditionally people will call this a light rail uh, system. Uh, so it no longer runs on steel rails that are being embedded on the road, but a, a more electrified uh, rail system uh, that will commonly known as an ART or AGT or APM, right? Um, so the ART uh, really uh, bridges. Uh, the conventional uh, systems that you see, uh, and and is actually at the, at the very low end, uh, it is actually efficient enough for it to uh, economical enough for it to actually be deployed uh, for something that is actually as as low as uh, about two thousand ppHPD, um, and and because it runs on rubber tires, uh, uh, it has got excellent gradeability up to ten percent on the on the slope, uh, and uh, you know you can actually carry it can actually be elevated as a system. Uh, and it can actually carry up to uh, 15,000, 16,000 PPHPD. Um, so uh, uh, it is a, a very flexible uh, system. Uh, obviously, for larger cities uh, that that has to carry a large amount of passengers during the peak hour, uh, you know, you 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 know, you will see a, a MRT system being deployed in a, a Klang Valley, for example, uh, that can carry up to 30,000 uh, people uh, uh, on a per hour per direction. Um, the the what we are seeing in terms of the uh, pandemic. Right, uh, it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, it's actually brought us to uh, uh, to, re, to to rethink actually how urban transit systems ought to be, ought to be implemented. Uh, um, you know, during the lockdown, uh, you will see that a lot of people uh, are obviously either working from home or have more flexible working hours. Now, what does that mean? It means that your peak hour demand uh, essentially flattened, right? Uh, so you've got people that are working on more flexible hours, uh, and uh, they need not to be in office at nine o'clock sharp, for example. Uh, so the future of working from home or, or I mean, God forbid, hopefully not rolling lockdowns, right, uh, is probably going to be something that we actually, actually have to think about. Uh, so as, as, uh, uh, as technology allows uh, for it, uh, 
uh, we will hopefully see a more um, uh, a more um, economical implementation of urban transit systems going forward. And we believe that actually ART is something that's actually going to be quite suitable uh, for a lot of uh, cities. Now, this is an overview of the ART system. Um, uh, on a standard configuration basis, it's got three carriages. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the uh, carriages on both ends are what we call moving carriages. Um, so it's got a, a model that uh, can actually pull it in either direction. Uh, this of dimension is uh, 32 meters long, uh, 2.65 meters width, uh, uh, wide, and 3.6 uh, meters uh, high. Uh, in terms of capacity, uh, on a standard uh, basis, it carries about 240 uh, passengers. Uh, and on a crush load peak basis, it can carry up to about 307 passengers. Maximum speed uh, travels at 70 kilometers per hour. And as I said, the earlier power system is an onboard power system, uh, either on a battery or hydrogen fuel cell, uh, um, you know, can be uh, implemented. Uh, the vehicle is actually packed with technology. Uh, and the key among it is actually uh, the path sensing um, uh, and virtual tracking uh, system. So interior layout, you have seen in the video earlier, it is very, very similar to what you can see uh, in a light rail uh, system. Uh, and because it actually is actually built and designed from ground up uh, from a real chassis, uh, what you get is actually the comfort uh, of actually riding on a real system uh, and uh, you know a, a lot closer to ground uh, and, and, and it absorbs the bumpiness of the roads a lot better uh, than a conventional bus. Um, this this is always a topic of interest. Uh, you know, people people will ask us, you know, what are those virtual tracks? You know, are they uh, special um, special equipment that has to be embedded on the ground itself? Uh, you know, how does it work? Um, I'm, I'm pleased to let you know that these virtual tracks are simply uh, road paint, all right? Your sim, sim, your, your your conventional thermal plastic uh, paint paint. Um, uh, any color would do as long as there's a contrast between uh, the road surface and the uh, and the virtual track. Uh, and of course, it has to be weather resist resistant uh, so that it can actually stand the uh, uh, stand the wear, wear over time. Yeah. Uh, typically, in, uh, in, uh, in places where it's been implemented in China, uh, you will pair that uh, with a, a, a test track uh, around it, uh, whereby uh, driver trainings uh, and uh, testing of the vehicle can actually take place as well. Now, in terms of communications, uh, uh, signaling and communications of the system, uh, it actually works on <coughs> uh, wireless uh, as well, uh, uh, and it required actually wired communication system, uh, but it works well on the, your 4G and 5G network, uh, whereby uh, you know, your OCC uh, uh, runs uh, the, the system uh, and communicates uh, 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 via wireless system uh, to actually track the positions uh, of, the, uh, of the trains. Right uh, and and communicates with the station uh, communication system as well, um, and because it is actually <clears throat> built on a, uh, a train or a rail platform, uh, it is actually capable of uh, uh, going to a fairly sophisticated uh, signaling communication system. So what this means is that uh, remember er earlier I said about it being capable of actually uh, faring up to about sixteen thousand uh, pphpd. Um, uh, at, at that kind of um, capacity, uh, you will actually require a fairly sophisticated uh, signaling and communication system uh, to actually drop the uh, intervals between or headway between the train to about, let's say, one and a half minute, uh, two minutes to one and a half minute. And, and with that, you will actually obviously need a more sophisticated signaling and communication system uh, to, to ensure that the train dispatches are, are, are being controlled well. Yeah, uh, And the ERT is actually fully capable of actually integrating with these uh, uh, sophisticated signaling and communication systems. Um, and, and this is an evolution that, that uh, we see um, hopefully coming to um, the urban transit systems uh, in Malaysia as well as regionally. Uh, if the ART is actually capable of traveling on the road, uh, it needs to be able to uh, efficiently uh, navigate the traffic. Uh, and uh, if it runs on the dedicated lane, uh, it, uh, it can actually, uh, and, and whereby the, the, the route itself uh, has got traffic signals, uh, it can actually communicate well uh, with the uh, uh, traffic uh, um, uh, lights in such a way uh, that allows it uh, priority to actually pass through uh, the, uh, think, uh, the the traffic lights. Um, we ha we have been um, we have actually implemented uh, this um, uh, bus pilot testing program in Iskandar, uh, where we have managed to actually deploy a, a, a quite a a, a simple uh, uh, system uh, together with the communications. Uh, uh, um, uh, 
beacons uh, uh, that are at the station uh, that can be actually housed at the station uh, and being monitored at the OCC, right? Um, so the screen that you see here is actually an integrated information system uh, that provides uh, LCD uh, uh, displaying the, the passenger information system. Uh, it also acts as a beacon for actually a wireless uh, router uh, that then communicates with the OCC um, uh, uh, or, or the operating control center. <clears throat> Here you will see a footage of it uh, running along Sotan, Lubaraya, Sotan, Iskandar together with the rest of the uh, electric buses. And uh, you will see, see the virtual tracks. Um, and this is uh, our driver driving it along uh, the route itself. So we, on one side of the road, uh, it was actually barricaded with New Jersey, New Jersey barriers. On the other side, uh, it has got an open uh, system whereby it, it, it just uh, runs along uh, uh, the rest of the passenger cars. In the first few weeks uh, of it being of it being piloted in Iskandar, uh, it obviously attracted a lot of attention. Uh, but the interesting thing about it is that as we go along during the pilot project, it becomes almost a familiar site for the highway users, um, and uh, you know, uh, which is uh, quite good because uh, really it really means that there is actually a certain amount of acceptance, uh, and no one is actually honking at it uh, or, or trying to actually go into its lane. Um, this shows the uh, agility of the ART around uh, the roundabout in Anjong. And the bottom uh, picture actually shows the uh, switching lane, uh, whereby uh, at the end of the route itself, uh, it switches. Uh, all, all it has to do is that uh, the, uh, the driver has to go into the other cab uh, and then switches it uh, over to the other side of the road. Uh, if need be, it can actually navigate around the roundabout, uh, but in a, a normal system implementation, uh, we would just actually deploy a switching lane at the end of the route. This next uh, slide of uh, next uh, uh, set of pictures actually show uh, the uh, virtual tracking system. Uh, you can see that the uh, drivers are actually uh, hand, hands off and the steering wheel uh, is just being navigated by the virtual tracks itself. So I hope this few slides uh, actually gives you a glimpse of the automated rapid transit system. Um, and uh, my next slide, I'm really going to just talk a bit about you know where we see the ART uh, stands in the whole uh, landscape of uh, public transportation or urban transit. This is a very uh, simple illustration of uh, 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 the future of urban transit, right? Um, you know, imagine if you are if you're at home, right, and you are and you and, and you want to actually get somewhere, uh, let's say the hospital within the city, right? Um, you will hopefully one day be able to actually pull out your mobile phone uh, and have access to an integrated journey planner, uh, and the, this integrated journey planner, you know, takes you from the doorstep of your house, uh, you know, and tells you exactly when your next uh, um, next mode of transportation is going to be. Uh, it could be in the form of a e-scooter. Uh, it could be in the form of a, a small uh, um, autonomous bus, uh, and uh, and and hopefully coupled with uh, what we call demand responsive transportation, uh, which is actually something that that is getting uh, is being piloted already in Malaysia, uh, and actually getting quite common uh, in uh, uh, in some parts of the world, uh, whereby uh, uh, passengers are being pulled together on a on a demand basis. And is being told uh, exactly what time you know your your particular bus uh, or, or public transport is going to arrive. So it's a bit like uh, uh, trying to hail a grab car, uh, but you know you're pulling it uh, in in the form of a public transport system. All right. So once you step out onto uh, the street, um, you're trying to get onto your public transportation uh, uh, network, right? Uh, you hopefully be using an e-ticketing uh, or contactless payments. Uh, I think the uh, COVID uh, era has actually changed us. Uh, we are very used to uh, scanning QR codes, uh, and uh, you know this is here to stay. Uh, and uh, I'm sure uh, it, it is it is really going to be implemented, uh, you know, as part of the uh, uh, some of these urban transit system uh, that that uh, that we are seeing in Malaysia. And hopefully, if you can hop on into you know an ART system, uh, which we call an infrastructure light uh, transit vehicle, uh, because you know. Uh, 
But you know, one of the things that actually uh, attracted us to actually bringing the ART here in Malaysia is that you know Malaysia has probably one of the best and most complete uh, high, highway network system. Uh, it would be really a shame, you know, just uh, just to actually have to use these highways uh, for for AR, uh, for uh, for normal cars uh, and and not uh, to actually ferry uh, people on a on a uh, medium capacity train like ART. Um, you know, once you actually arrive at your des destination uh, and you are, let's say if you're done with your things that you want to do at your at a hospital visiting uh, someone, right? Um, uh, let's say you want to go somewhere for lunch, you have not you have not driven to the hospital, right? Um, then hopefully you'll be able to hop on into a, a low speed uh, micro or personal mobility uh, type vehicles uh, that is either autonomous in nature or is actually ride sharing in nature. Uh, what, so what it means is that the ride sharing concept uh, we think is going to be here to stay as well. Uh, and, and we will see a lot of inner trans uh, transformation of the inner city uh, whereby parking lots are no longer uh, going to be uh, dominated by personal cars, uh, but more by uh, electric vehicles uh, that can be deployed on a ride sharing basis. You know, and when your vehicles actually run out of uh, juice, right, rather than going to a traditional petrol station, uh, you'd be going into uh, a uh, charging uh, station uh, that is either powered by electric or hydrogen uh, to actually fill up your vehicle. Now, in cities that are expanding uh, and, uh, you know, needs to have uh, bigger uh, transit systems uh, like your, your LRTs and your MRTs, uh, the future is going to be uh, hopefully uh, a maglev uh, tight system, uh, um, uh, a medium speed maglev. I think a lot of us are actually familiar with high speed maglevs uh, or magnetic levitation. Um, uh, China, uh, our partner actually in particular CRRC, uh, has already been developing a medium speed maglev uh, that actually levitates and, and hence uh, actually lowers the requirement for uh, yeah, infrastructure or, 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 the, or the columns actually uh, that support this uh, real, real infrastructure. Um, so in a nutshell, this is actually how we see uh, the future urban transit system, end-to-end uh, -end seamless mobility, uh, and uh, you know, Mobilis obviously hopes to actually play a key part uh, in, in trying to actually make this happen in Malaysia. And uh, you know, in our pilot project that we, are, we that we have actually implemented with Erda, um, I'm, I'm I'm actually very hopeful. I'm glad to say that a lot of these uh, uh, details are, are being are being thought out right from your journey planning uh, to uh, your e-ticketing. Uh, deployment of uh, demand responsive type transportation. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, that's why I say is this is going to be a very near future of, uh, of urban transit uh, system. Uh, uh, and hopefully uh, that's going to happen first actually in Malaysia. So thank you. Uh, that is my last slide. Thank you very much, Mr. Chan, for the informative presentation. It was really eye opening to see what the future of our public transportation could be in this country. Um, we have come to the end of this session and uh, we would like to have um, shared some questions with you, Mr. Chan, but we're going to save them for the Q&A session that we have at the end of the talk. Uh, so I'm going to move on to our next speaker. Uh, please head back to the agenda page and click on to the second session of this panel. Thank you. Thank you.